Have you ever run a query and then gone to make a cup of coffee while it executes? We've all been there. It's easy to write SQL that works, but writing SQL that works fast is a different skill entirely. In this video, I'll walk you through a process you can follow to improve the performance of your SQL queries. And if you want to go deeper, check out my course, Write Faster SQL. It takes this process further with real-world examples and hands-on practice. The link is in the description. Let's get into it. Before you can fix a slow query, you need to know which one is causing the problem. This sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised how often developers jump into performance tuning without confirming what's actually slow. Sometimes you already know what query is slow, and if you do, you can skip to the next step. But if you don't know what the slow query is, there are a few ways to find out. You can investigate your application code to find queries you think might be slow and extract them into an SQL editor. Or you can turn on query logging or use monitoring tools. You can look at the data dictionary to see currently running or recently run queries, as well as some statistics on these queries. Or sometimes your users will be the first to tell you which area of an application is slow, which is a good starting point for an investigation. In the Write Faster SQL course, this is where we start because you can't improve what you can't measure. So once you've got a slow query, then what? The next step is to understand the execution plan. This is where most people's eyes glaze over. Execution plans can look confusing if you haven't used them before but they're one of the most powerful tools you have. An execution plan tells you how the database is running your query. It shows you what tables it's reading, what indexes it's using, and where the slow steps are. The key is learning how to read it and knowing what to look for. In the course, I walk through real examples and explain how to open the plan in different SQL editors, how to spot the inefficient steps such as full table scans and which parts of the plan actually matter. Seeing them in multiple editors is helpful because they look different and show different pieces of information. Once you understand the execution plan, the next steps become much clearer. One of the most common causes of slow queries is missing or ineffective indexes. However, not all indexes help. I've seen queries get slower after I've added what I thought was the right index. There's a skill to this. You want to create indexes that match the filtering and joining in your queries or cover all the needed columns where possible. There's more to it than that, but those are some big areas to focus on. You also want to avoid over-indexing the table. In Module 3 of the Write Faster SQL course, we look at how to find existing indexes in Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, and Postgres. We look at how to create indexes and see their impacts on the query and execution plan. We look at what covering indexes are and when to use them. Also, what to consider when choosing which columns to index. This step involving indexes alone can make a huge difference in performance, but there's more we can do. Sometimes the performance issue can't be solved with indexes. In this case, it's the query itself. There are many reasons a query may be slow due to the way it's structured, such as joining too many tables, selecting too many columns, using keywords that don't perform well, or techniques that have better alternatives. Small changes in a query can have a big impact. The fourth stage covers all of this. It involves comparing a query before and after you make changes, so you can be sure that your changes don't break your query. You can also learn how to remove unnecessary parts of a query. You can rewrite a query in a way that's easier for the database to optimise and therefore perform better. Once the basics are in place, there are some intermediate techniques you can use to take your query performance even further. There are many things in SQL you can do. Some examples are using CTEs or common table expressions to improve the structure of complex queries. Another technique is to replace expensive logic and calculations with pre-calculated summary tables. You can also use temporary tables to simplify processing. Your choice of data types can have an impact on performance, so optimising your data types can help. Some specific techniques you might be using, such as wildcard matching for searches or pagination, can be optimised pretty easily as well. Modules 5 and 6 of Write Faster SQL dive into these patterns in more detail. These are the kinds of techniques that separate basic SQL from SQL that performs under pressure, at scale, on large data sets, and in production. So let's recap the process. Step 1 is to find the slow query. 
Don't waste time guessing. Step two is to view the execution plan to help spot the bottlenecks. Step three is to improve your indexing, but only where it helps. Step four is to restructure the query to make it easier for the database to optimize. Step five is to use better techniques for your queries, which means using the right tools for the right job. If this process was helpful, you'll love my Write Faster SQL course. It expands on everything I shared here with demos, practice exercises, and real examples in multiple databases. Check the link in the description to learn more and join. And now that you've seen the process to speed up SQL queries, watch this next video where I walk through an execution plan step by step and show you exactly how to read it to find performance issues. Thanks for watching.